Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Okay, today in the Silver Wolves series, I'm going to be responding to one of my subscribers who has a medical problem. He was in the military and thank you for your service. Um, I want that straight up. And he got injured. His back is very rigid and he's not in a wheelchair, but he has to walk with sticks. And so therefore, he said, look, I'm wanting to be able to take the grandkids out, us maybe play around in the backyard or go to some park or something. It's going to be car camping. And we've already discussed about using a cot, which was for him. And so he says that should work fairly well. He can get up and down off of that. But going all the way to the ground is just, it can be done, but it's really hard getting up and down. And bending over is extremely difficult and so what he said was how can I cook and or do a campfire while I'm out at the event with my grandkids you know yeah I can tell the grandkids to do it but what can I do and I understand that we all want to try to maintain as much mobility and activity as we can okay so here's my little two cents as far as for a way to cook I recommend that you get a little stove. Now, I like Trangias, okay? <clears throat> and this is right off of uh, Amazon. I think it was like $20 for this thing. And they come with a snufter lid, which I have, but I don't have it on this one, which allows you to snuff it out and regulate the heat. You simply unscrew and you feel it, and fill it, with denatured alcohol. Now, if you go into the hardware store and look where the paint thinner and stuff like that is, you're going to find something that's going to be labeled denatured alcohol, or it's even a lot of times like Walmart labeled fuel. And so that's what you burn in these. You're just going to pour it in, and then you're going to take a match and light it. Now, around this outer ring right here, drizzle a little bit out there and set that afire and let the whole top catch fire it will activate and burn and be just like a gas stove running when it's running whenever you're done snuffed it out or let it run empty and then just it stays in this and you can just set a pot directly on top of it very simple and easy not a whole lot of mush you don't have to have a great deal of dexterity for this because you don't have to pump up or rake, finally regulate or anything like that. It's just turn it on, let it go, and whenever it is done cooking, either simply let it run empty by itself, wait till it's cool, and then put the lid back on, or you can use the, sniff, the snuffer lid to snuff it out. These are open and easy to do as opposed to something that you got to reach your hand down in. might be easier on you. <coughs> now, let's come to the campfire idea. You want to be able to do a campfire for the grandkids. You're going to have to make certain concessions. One, you can't get down there to easily start the fire. Okay. Now, you can set up something up here on like a little table or a bench or something like that you're going to transfer. So if you want to do like a ferro rod and ignite a tinder, and then let one of your grandkids transfer it to the fire pit, that can be done, or several other ways. But if you're not interested in any of that, you just want to start a fire, go get you one of these logs. Now these are sold at Walmart, and they're just a regular old fire log. This one is called an Enviro log, and it's safe for indoors and outdoors. And what it is, it's recycled cardboard wax boxes like food comes in, meat comes back into the store, the big old heavy wax cardboard boxes, they recycle them into these. These burn very hot and they're safe to cook on. Now, like I said, I, I can't get down there. Here's the trick. Take you some cord of something you don't care about. Don't buy a good cord for this. Don't buy a paracord. Go to Walmart and get some cotton jute or something like butcher's twine, maybe. Do it. Take it and right in the middle, simply tie yourself a knot on it, real easy, where you can pick it up and it'll hang there, okay? Now, what you're going to do is you're going to sit on the edge of the table or whatever. You're going to light the bottom of it, 
and you're gonna let it have cord and you're gonna swing it over here to where the fire is gonna be and you're gonna set it down. Don't put it over your body, but move it around. I don't recommend doing it straight out in front of you because you talked about how you're a little bit tippy. I don't want you to fall forward into the fire. So you want it off to the side. So what I recommend is to bring it up like this, set the bottom end on fire with a lighter, and it will not go whoof. It has to start burning. It takes a second. Swing it out with a cord, set it down. Now again, use cheap cord. Now I can just cut this cord and let that piece burn. Now take my next piece of firewood, tie a piece of string, swing it out and put it on it. Those butcher's twine or cotton jute, those rolls of them, packing, uh, packing string you see all the time, that's jute. Works just fine for this because it burns easily. Just swing it out there, cut it with a pair of scissors and you're done. And then being off to the side of you, you can then adjust however you need to to be there at the fire. That way if you want to add one, you can add some firewood, tie up two or three pieces, stand up, if you have to use sticks, if you can only use one hand, set your chair where you can swing it out to the side and set it on the fire, see? And that way you can get up and move away without the fire being directly in front of you. I know this is a compromise. And I'm very sorry that your service to our country has led to this. I, I really am. But you can overcome almost anything with a little thinking and willing to adapt. My grandfather, as I've said many times, only had one arm. He had gone down into a cotton mill when he was a boy. And in those days, they had these big, huge leather belts running on big pulleys underneath the floor and that's how they powered a lot of the machinery. You had a central shaft running and then a pulley came off of it and a belt like you see on a car and that's how it powered it. And He went down there with his pocket knife to sharpen his knife on that high speed belt and something went wrong and it grabbed his arm and it pulled it right off his body. Uh, in the machinery. They, upstairs, they didn't even know it until one of the machines bound up and they sent a guy downstairs to see what happened. And he gets under the building and he finds him sitting there where he just destroyed it. Took his arm right out of socket and left a hunk of meat but just tore the arm off of it. He adapted his life to only having one hand. And he found ways to do it. There wasn't anything from there them to give him a prosthesis with. There was nothing, no stump to work with, see. He took it from the shoulder joint, just pulled out of socket. There was no shoulder in there anymore. It was just some bones up here. So he couldn't even get a, a fake arm other than just strapping like a dummy arm to the side of him that did absolutely nothing. He couldn't even pose. So he learned to use one hand to do everything. He fished with a cane pole. He fished with a reel. You know, I saw him do this he was able to figure a way to do it with just one hand using his knees using little tricks using toggles use a trick of some kind he'll find a way to do it you just got to sit and think about it and you'll find a way now with your back being really rigid like that and you said you, you really can't bend over well or anything like that and you're afraid you lose your balance easy and fall in fire Using this or swinging it out away from you, a piece of firewood putting it on the fire will be safer. Next, get you some sort of, I'd say like a piece of rebar to utilize as a fire poker. Because you're going to have to adjust a little bit, you know. And so get you like a 48 inch long piece of rebar and have one end curved up a little bit and put a handle on the other end. We got something you can grip, see. And that way you can pull logs into position, adjust, poke the fire, and etc. to adjust it without having to get so close to it. Being able to cook, like I said, a little trangia or even a propane stove would be fine. Something you can sit up on a table, turn it on, light it, and set the pot on. That would be easy. You don't have to cook on the fire. It'd be nice to, yeah. What's things you can do with the grandkids? Uh, Walmart sells these long skewers 
in sporting goods. That's for putting hot dogs on and holding it out over the fire. Let the grandkids cook hot dogs. They can do that. Um, being able to, uh, you can cook a steak on a fork if you just put it out there over the heat and let it do it. There are ways to do it. All you've got to do is adapt. Realize your limitation and then adapt to it. Um, I knew a gentleman many years ago um, who fished, and he was kind of like you. He'd been in World War II, and his back had been so damaged in an artillery uh, explosion where the gun he was manning blew up, and it, he could walk. That was about it, but he was always wet, very hunched over because of it. And that's how I saw putting firewood into a fire like that. He would take a piece of string and tie it to the firewood stick. You know, he'd, what he was doing is he was fishing on a riverbank at night for catfish. And he would, on the back of his trucks where he put the wood, and he would just go ahead and tie length of string on it about that long, the looping end of it. And so when he wanted to add a piece of firewood, he went and got one, grabbed it, and he had a little stick with a hook on it. He'd hook it and he'd swing it out and he'd sit it on the fire and let go of the hook to let the string burn. You know, and that was also his poker. That stick with a hook on it, he could poke the fire and stuff like that to keep things going because he was listening for the little bell on the end of the, the fishing rod. He was cat fishing. And he would pick up the rod, sit down in his chair, put his feet out in front of him to brace himself and be able to reel the catfish up. See, he carried good heavy line and so he didn't have to worry. He just drugged the fish to him. And he'd pick it up, reach out and grab a hold of it, take his pliers, take it out, drop them into the live well to the ice chest, rebait, and throw it back out. He adapted. I'm sure you can do this. I'm sure that you can, with a little bit of practice and thing, now don't hurt yourself, of course. We don't want to swing a big hunk of weight and pull anything in your back. So let's practice at home. Start with something like a piece of string and a shoe and gradually go up. Do you get to be four, five, six pounds? Make sure it's not gonna hurt you. I don't know what your exact medical condition is. So you just told me it was stiff. And therefore do it, but silver wolves will find a way. We've got them grandkids that we're trying to teach and learn and pass on to. And so the silver wolves, we've got to do it. Maybe it's something where you can't go alone with them. You need a, another adult with you. That's not anything to be ashamed of. You're here for the kids. It ain't about you. It ain't about me. And I'm not trying to preach to you. But you can do this. Silver wolves will find a way to adapt. All we've got to do is think about it and then see what works to get what we want done. Find a way. I hope this helps you. I really, really do. And I hope you have many years of adventures with your grandkids. If you get a chance, send me a picture of you and the grandkids. I'd love it. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.